Okay, so obvious in numbers. I will start by introducing myself. My name is Anna and I'm working in the OBS front-end team. And let's start with a short introduction about OBS. Open build service is a generic system to build and distribute binary packets from sources in an automatic, consistent, and reproducible way. And now I'm going to talk about the numbers from the our public instance, build.opensource.org. That is what probably all of you or most of you use. So that's today numbers or some days ago numbers. Then we have 46. 1,891 users, 46,292 projects, 399,332 packages, 478,181 requests, 794,210 reviews, and 44,219 comments. So, yeah, quite big numbers. And then let's talk about some more interesting data. Then users. So well, I already say that we have 46,891 users, but that is how it looks over the time. So yeah, we already see here that over this period there were like more users. Maybe it's easy to see it here. Here, the points are the number of users that were created every month. So, and then the blue line is for being able to see it with all without the points far away. So the regression of the points. So we can see some interesting things here. Then we see points over here that some months we create we have more than 80 new users, and then we have zero or almost zero users some months too. And then, yeah, you see this that I already mentioned in the previous graph. You could say, yeah, then we have many new users at the at some point, but yeah, now doesn't seem that we have that many users. Could be that OBS is not that popular anymore. Yeah, OBS is great, so of course not that. It's something we can explain. It is related with the diffusion of innovation theories. That basically is for all new software, but in general any product. So it's how people get used to a new tendency in the market. So basically, have the innovators that are the well educated with more source of information and also more open people. Then the early adopters, they have also a lot of source of information and are popular and social leaders that are followed by the early majority that is more doubtless about using new technology, but that also join. And then we have the late majority that is more, uh, not that innovate, they are, they don't like new tendencies that much, but when most people have joined, then they also join. And at the last point, we have the laggards that are basically the people that join because everybody was already there. So this is a the Gaussian function, and if we go back, we can see that we also have it here. So when the product was basically new, after that, there was no innovation or not that much innovation anymore, and that's why the number of users keep more or less stable. So it's not that we are doing anything wrong or OBS is not popular, it's something normal. So now the requests. Yeah, I already say 478,181 requests. And as a curious information, the average time for a request to get accepted is 140 hours, so something less than six hours. Yeah, of course, can be some months for some project packages and maybe few minutes for some others, but yeah, that's the average. And yeah, what what percentage of our requests get accepted? Not all of them, but most of them, 77%. And yeah, also the next 
percentage that we see here painting it by state is superset. So that means that they were not also close, but that we keep working on it. Or So it's also quite good. And then we have also some revoke and decline that as are more or less the bad ones, but we close them. But it's not that a big number. And then we also have the new ones and the review ones that, that are the ones that are open or in process now. That was the number is that slow because just the data from some days ago. And then we have the deleted, deleted, deleted ones that, yeah, currently only admins can delete them. So probably was like that from the whole history of OBS and that's why we don't have many delete requests. So now let's move to the collaboration activity. How much people collaborate inside of OBS? Yeah, that's the total activity over time. So the first time I saw this graph, I thought, okay, why it has this shape? And why, I don't know if you see it, I will put another graph where you can see it better later. But these peaks here, yeah, they, why are they there? So my first guess was that maybe the main uh, projects affect this graph. Yeah, and we see that they affect maybe the shape because yeah, all of them seems to be a combination between a linear and an exponential function. And every time we have more and more projects, so it makes sense that that was give it the shape, but we don't see any peak or in any of the main uh, project, like factory that is the biggest one that can cause this here. Okay, then I thought, okay, maybe then the releases are affecting this graph. But I paint them and also that it doesn't seem to affect the graph any, any, or at least not only, that cannot only be the only reason for the peaks. So then I think, okay, what, what can that be? Then I find the number of active projects. I mean, a small or medium project, well, also the big ones, but the number of projects that are active, even if they are really, really small. And you paint it with the total activity, you already can see that more or less that where there are peaks in one of them, there are in the other. I wanted to show it to you it properly, so I derivate the function on top. And then you already here, you can see that Every time here there is a peak, there is a peak in the other one. And yeah, I calculate the correlation as it's really, really high, 0 0.85. So maybe it's not the only reason, but at least it's the most important reason why we have the, like our act collaboration activity get increased. It's the number of projects and not the biggest project. So I found it quite curious. And then, yeah, there is something else that, yeah, catch your attention because there was something that catch my attention and is that there are no holidays. So probably the obvious user would look something like this because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and yeah, now let's talk about the hardware we have for the Sternas instance. Yeah, I read some days ago that human brain can store one between one and 10 terabytes and in every something than three. So then I will tell you in human brain so you can remember it better. So we have 15 terabytes for the source server host, so around five human brains. We have for the four repository server hosts, the first one that is for the distributions, it has 19 terabytes, so around six human brains. Uh, then the home project is 10 terabytes, around three, three human brains. Then states, that is for testing in OpenQA and so on, so only around one human brain. And yeah, then we have the rest, and that is seven terabytes, so around two human brains. And then we have 10 scheduler architectures, that are all of those you see here. Yeah. So now workers, we have 178 a host and then 1,180 workers, and you can also see it for architecture. So, for example, eh, here for the, the, this one that is the biggest one, we have 124, and then 80 
841 workers. So now the system. So the source activity per day, we have OSC check-ins around 2,300. In the user interface, that is only 600, so much less, so most people is using OCC for that. And then we have around 300 branches. That yeah, is also quite a lot, because that is only for one day. And now here we have the binary activity by bull type. So yeah, the numbers are the same ones I already mentioned in total, but yes, you can see when they fail, succeed, or unchanged. And change basically means that it was built and also success, but this result didn't change, so it was not updated. And then here that it seems to be zero is not zero, because you could think, oh, the distributions never fail. No, they also fail. But if I don't remember one, the, the number was 98, so 19 is comparing it with 50,000 is not there. So yeah, we can see some curious things like Staying is the less that the one that less fail comparing with the rest. And yeah, and then the distribution is the one that more changed that when we build it, we have to update the result because it was changed. So yeah, curious. And then some data that we have in OBS so that you can access it now or when you want. Is, yeah, we have a statistics from the last uh, build for every package. Yeah, for example, for this root, that is for our OBS instance in OBS. We have, yeah, uh, how long it takes to install the package, 31 seconds. The mean build task was, yeah. And the use this space. Yeah, some information you can check. And also in our main page, we also have the system status. So the number of build jobs during the last week. And it also tells you here how many build hosts and packages are waiting and so on. And then in our monitor page, you can also see how many workers are building here in this one, how many workers are building, dead, down, away, and so on. And also here, how many packages are waiting for been built or how many I block. So the first thing you see here when we select here one month is this thing here that was uh, probably some of you will remember that OBS was done several days around two weekends ago. So that's why we have this here. And also you can see, I didn't calculate it, but I think it's really Obvious that this, you see the number of workers building, so the green part in the top. You can also see that there's some relation here with this graph. So yeah, it makes sense. The number of packages that are waiting for building are more or less the workers that are building. Because, yeah. So yeah, and if we want to see it for a long period, we have here one year, and then something we can see, for example, here we have more workers. That's because new machines were bought. And then also here, the number of workers was decreased just because some of them were turned off. And you can also think, see things like here. This one, just <laughs> Santiago broke OBS some days ago. Yeah, hi, Santiago. <laughs> and yeah, then you see here that there were less things working because OBS was broken because Santiago broke it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now let's talk about our project in GitHub. Um, we have 125 contributors in the whole history of OBS, 32 in the last year. So yeah, quite a lot. And then the number of pre requests merged. Yeah, you can see that in this period there were not pull requests and then they start like crazy. So yeah. Push to master, basically. <laughs> yeah. Since more or less two years ago, we at least in the front end thing we start working with pull requests and although the backend still keep 
working without them. That's why at the beginning you see like, okay, no pull requests at all because they didn't just push to master. And then, yeah, you see the code frequency. In the second part, it's, you can see some relation with the previous graph, but yeah, in the first part there was also some activity, although there were no pull requests. And also the act code frequency doesn't match exactly the pull request, but because as I said, the backend is also in the same repository and they are not using pull requests. So that's why these two graphs look quite different. And yeah, this is the commit activity from the last year. So it is per week, that's why it oscillates that much because depending on the week there are many or less commits. Yeah, you may wonder what is that. I take the data at the beginning of this week, so this week we're not commit. That's why it seems that this week we didn't do anything. So if I take it now, then it will look nice. And now the code here, it's also include other things related with uh, OBS, like OSSC, that we will see like in the lines of code later, we also have Python. Yeah, this is the total lines of code. We have 282,192 lines of code, although you see that not everything is code lines. You have also 12% of blank lines there and 11% of common lines. And then here, the lines of code by language. Yeah, as I said before, we are also taking here in Takan OCC, not only the GitHub repository from OBS, that's why we also have Python. And then yeah, mainly, Ruby, that is the front end, for the back end, and then, yeah, some other languages over there. And that was all, but there is more. I mean, the talks from other people also related to OBS, then Bion will hold here his talk when I finish. Uh, then you also have Simon and Adrian talk, followed by a workshop about app image, and yeah, get packaged into package hub by Wolfgang that he had his talk yesterday and we, he will continue with the workshop today. And then take me to Lip by Axel. And yeah, two, two more tomorrow. Packaging workshop by Simon and replace of files discussion by Bernard. And that was all. There are any questions? No, great. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm here to talk about my cat. <laughs> <laughs>